In my last video I showed how to make fractals in Blender using geometry nodes, and since then I've actually managed to improve the system quite a bit. So I figured I would make a follow-up video where I go through the new additions of the system, as well as show a pretty nice way to shade the resulting fractals, and turn this into something like this. Just a disclaimer, since this is a follow-up video to my previous fractal video, I suggest that you check that one out before watching this one, because in this video I will pick up where the last one ended. So if we're all up to speed, let's grab some coffee, fire up Blender, and make something cool. Before we get into how to shade this thing, I will go through my new additions to the geometry node setup. Though if you're just here for the shading part, just go ahead and skip to this timecode. So the first addition to this setup is a way to set different meshes on each iteration. All we need to do is drag the object input of the point instance node over here to the group input. Now we are able to either drag an object from the collection overview down to the field of the modifier, or select an object from the dropdown. The second addition is a way to control the rotation of the instance objects of each iteration out here in the modifier stack. To do that, first add a point rotate node before the point scale node. Then add both a separate XYZ and combine XYZ node. Plug the vector input of the separate XYZ node into the group input, and plug the vector output of the combine XYZ node into the vector input of the point rotate node. After that, connect X to X, Y to Y, and C to C. The last node that we need to add is a math node of the type 2 radians. Connect one of these nodes to each of the X, Y, and C connections between the separate and combine nodes. The reason to why we do this is that we want to be able to work with degrees, and since the point rotate node interprets whatever values you plug into it as radians, we need to use the math nodes to make the conversion. Otherwise, an input value of 180, which in degrees would be the equivalent to half a rotation, would instead be interpreted as nearly 29 full rotations. Alright, all that's left now is to press N to open the property sidebar, and rename the object input to instance object, and rename the vector input to rotation. Now, while this system is a bit more messy than the original, it does give us a lot more creative freedom. As an example, creating fractals comprised of many different meshes can now easily be done without creating separate instances of the Yomder node system. Also, having the ability to rotate the instances of each iteration separately not only gives us control of a whole new layer of complexity, but we can also use it to animate the rotation of the iterations in a way that wasn't possible before. Animating the rotation values is especially effective if parts of the fractals are elongated like this. The shader I'm about to show you is not only extremely simple, but it can actually produce some really stunning results, and the best part is that it works for both EV and Cycles, though the setup varies somewhat between the two. I'll be using Cycles for this, but I will show you the equivalent shader for EV as well, in case you want to use that instead. Select the base mesh, go to the Materials tab, and press New to add a new material to the object. Rename the material to Fractal Shader, then go to the Shading workspace up here in the toolbar to open the Shader Editor. Press Shift-A to add an Ambient Occlusion node. Set sample values to 32, the distance value to 2, and connect the AO output to the base color input of the principal BSDF. This node is used to calculate how much ambient lighting each point of an object is receiving, and we can use that information to distribute different colors on the object itself. The way we do that is by adding a color ramp between the ambient occlusion node and the principal BSDF. Now, the exact values for the color ramp is dependent on the shape of the fractal, so try and play around with it until you find something you like. Here is my color ramp along with the color values I use to get this particular shading. If you want to use EV instead of cycles, make sure that ambient occlusion is enabled here in the render properties tab. In order to get a similar gradient to what we got in cycles, just add a map range node between the ambient occlusion node and the color ramp 
and set the value of from min to something like 0.9. The reason for why we need to do this is because the ambient occlusion values we get when using cycles differs quite a bit from the values we get when using Eevee. In terms of setting up a scene for rendering, I added a camera with the focal length set to 180 and positioned it in a way that looked appealing. I added an area light and positioned it at an angle above the fractal, so that the top front of the fractal is lit up. I then added a plane and positioned it behind the fractal, and then scaled it up until it filled the camera's viewport. To get some separation between the fractal and the background, I added a new material to the backdrop plane, set the color to a dark bluish, and reduced the specular value while increasing the roughness value to make it less reflective. I ended up increasing the size of the area light to 3 meters and increasing the strength to 1000. I then duplicated the area light, changed the hue to a light blue and reduced the strength to 200. I positioned this second light opposite the main light to add some extra color to the shadows of the fractal. When I was satisfied with the scene setup, I set the render samples to 32, enabled the denoising data in the view layer properties tab, and did a test render. I then used this test render to do some compositing. First, I added a denoising node and plugged the denoising normal into the normal and the denoising albedo into the albedo. Next, I added a color balance node and set the correction formula to offset power slope. I then tweaked the values until I got the coloration I wanted. The last thing I added was a bright contrast node to brighten up the render a bit. Once I was satisfied with the compositing, I pumped up the render samples to 512 and did a proper render and here is the result. One thing to keep in mind when coloring fractals is that there isn't really any right or wrong way to do it. There is no set of rules on what colors to use or even how many, so just go wild. I hope you found this video useful and if you make some cool fractals, I would love to see them.